<clears throat> John Vogel, and welcome into the JED experience. Joined here by Trey Valentine. Yes, sir. New linebacker, Cumberland State. Kareem Bryant. Kareem Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem Bryant, upcoming senior, right? It's your senior oh, year. Junior. It was your junior year? Yes, okay. So you got two years left. Beautiful. I watched you play a lot of basketball this year, and we're going to stay away from that for the most part. But, Trey, what I kind of talked about with you was this is the first time that I have – I have somebody coming out of high school going to college on this thing. So it's a, it's a fresh perspective. And most of the guys that I've talked to are guys that are going pro, they're going into the league, they're already in the league. You know, so it's like, it's, it's an experience in that regard. Where they're talking about all the work that they've done and they're talking about this and that. You're just getting started. So I almost think that there's almost like a for lack of a better term, it's like that virgin thing, right? Where it's like you're breaking in, you're brand new to it. So, start off with you talking about football. When did you start playing football? What got you into it? You know, what is, no, tell us that story. So I started playing football in second grade, desired. Then I played all the way from second to sixth grade. I played from running back, fullback, everything. You know, grand house, you play in every position if you're a good athlete. Then I stopped once I got to um, seventh grade and then play again to my own sophomore year. Coach Joe kept on asking me, I really, I was the game head. I switched from sports. I was just playing the game all day. So then I just came back out my um, sophomore year, broke my jaw. So I really didn't play my sophomore year at all. Broke your jaw? Yes, broke my jaw. Had, was that, that wasn't a locker room fight or anything? No, nah, it <laughs> happened in a scrimmage game. Okay. So broke my jaw. So I really, my first, I really didn't play to my junior and senior year. I was playing football, real football. Yeah. So who was the inspiration that got you into it? Who got you really... I, I say Coach Joe, because he wouldn't leave me alone, like, blowing up my phone. I don't know how he even got my phone number, so, like, <laughs> he was with leave me alone, so I, I give everything to Coach Joe. Sounds about like Coach Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, Coach Joe, we're talking about Coach O.C., right? No, Coach Joe, Joe, Big Joe. Joe. Oh, Big Guy. Okay, yeah. okay. Coach Joe hit you up. Okay. Gotcha. So, what what point, when you kind of walked on that field and you started playing, what point were you like, I belong, I do this? What do you mean? Like, well, like, you know, you're going to college now for it. So at what oh, yeah. point was it kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, this is what I need to be doing. All right, so I'm going to say I was playing junior for fun. I wasn't thinking about nothing about college. Then I got on Twitter. I just downloaded Twitter, and I see all the people around. I was like, dang, oh, they're getting offers and everything. I like this. It's pretty cool. So then coming in senior year, I had a whole different mindset. Set me just playing for fun. I was going to play for a reason. And that's how, like, everything come up. I'm going to go to college and all that. And I kind of started a little late because I was just going to, going to school just to get by. Then going for my um, junior and senior year, I have to actually like, try so I get the grades up to um, get like higher offers and all that. Got to pause there, right? So, Kareem now, like like with you, rising junior, took a year off of football. What got you starting to play, man? What made football so important to you? Uh, I was just same as him. Started playing Pop Warner football. I was just like, hey, I love it. I played everywhere they wanted me to play. I was just like, you know, I'm just going to continue playing. So I played all the way up until I got to middle school. Played all the way through there. And then high school came around. Played my freshman year. And then I was like, uh, I think I'm going to take a year off. So I took my sophomore year off. And I just focused on basketball and baseball. And then I was just like, uh, I want to go back. Because I'm getting tired of just sitting at home. So I want to go back. I came back this year. And I want to get get to work, ready for the season, get here so we can show people what we made of. Yeah, now you guys also, it's worth pointing out, for a lot of my audience that isn't going to know about Giles County specifically, but you guys made a run. You were in the top four teams yeah. in, the, in, the, in the class, in the state. And so this past year. So they're looking at the team coming up this year, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Like, that scrimmage was exciting. Like, you know, just seeing the players pop and the different guys step up that hadn't, that, you know, needed to step up at different times. It's, it's going to be fun. So, with you, what's the focus? What's, you know, Trey here talked about being a junior and playing for fun and then coming into senior year, the different yeah. mentality. What's that focus like for you right now? For my focus, uh, I really just, I just want to get known. Like, I want to get scholarships. I just want to play play my role, like wherever coach put me in, 
I, he should be able to trust me and go out there and do my role and do what he want me to do. That's how I look at it. And then you also mentioned something here off camera about what you want to potentially be doing if if you're not playing football. Yeah, so what is like, it? if the college and stuff didn't work out, I would like to go to the Navy because my cousin had joined the Navy and I just always would like, I think that's something that I, I could be good to do. It can make me become a better man, break my attitude and stuff. I just want to find something new for me. Yeah, dude, I went Army, obviously, but like, you're right. You're right. It's, it's wild. It's a wild experience. So for you, is you're getting your let's talk about your game a little bit. Because I think I was talking to you off camera too. It was like, you know, you played linebacker here, you had the beware of the dog on the back of your <laughs> but like uh, your your back pad. Yeah. Which was one of the first things I noticed. I remember sitting up there I only did the last three games of the year, right? right. When I got hired on here at WKSR. And I looked down and I saw I spotted it. Like as you were going out, I think for the coin toss. And I was like, I pointed, I would point at Casey. I'm like, Casey, I was like, you see that right there? You see what he's wearing? And we started, we got a good laugh at it. It was like, yeah, no. When you started playing, it was like, yeah, no, there is a dog right there. That's a problem. That's that's a problem if you're on the other team. So I was, I was kind of telling you, I think that you're more of a safety at the next at, at college. So you've already, you told me that you've already started that move from linebacker to safety, right? Yeah. So let's talk about your game a little bit. How do you think your game? Moves from linebacker to safety. How well do you think that's going to go? I mean, I think it's going to play well. Cause I was playing first towel, like I was playing DB some plays. I was back at linebacker, so I was already in high school playing two positions at once. Mm-hmm. So it should be easier come at college when just focus on one instead of two. So I think the transition will be easy. With your game, I think that you're also one of the things that you rely on is your explosion, right? Because mm-hmm. your explosion, you're fast. You come off with that first step, and then that's when you hit somebody. You go, you drive through somebody. Mm-hmm. So. What are some of the things that they're trying to get you to work on right now? At college, at college yeah. level, they want me my vision, feet work, and uh, man to man. Because they want me playing a bunch of man. I'm playing the nickel position. I'm not really going to be in the safety, really. I'm going that two man receiver where you drop the um, linebacker, he comes out, and I come to and I guard that two man. So I'll follow him the whole game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, because most teams are going to take a linebacker off the field anyways to go five, to go into nickel, right? So that's where you're, you're the nickel. Which I think that that makes all the sense in the world. You take the linebacker type that can play on the back end, right? Mm-hmm. That's the whole idea of the nickel is that you've got a guy that's kind of more of a safe, kind of more of a linebacker, but yeah. in a safety's body, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about the, the footwork and the, and the vision. Like how are those, How are, what are you doing to try to improve on that stuff? I'm turning like a full DB. Like I'm doing corner stuff. I said last year I was doing outside linebacker work. This year I'm doing straight corner. I ain't working on outside linebacker, nothing. I'm doing straight corner DB, watching film on corners now. Last year I watched a bunch of Dallas Turner. Now I switched to Darren James. I was watching both of them. Now I'm just watching Darren James and Jalen Ramsey. I'm watching all of them, how they play. So you don't know if you watch Jalen Ramsey, He's playing the nickel majority of the time and corner. He's playing both, so he's like a good person to watch when it's come down to the nickel. Yeah, because he's had to. Yeah. You know, with I think that as he's starting to get older, they don't want him on the boundary as much yeah. anymore, right? Where it's like if you, I don't want to, I don't want to see Jalen get smoked, so you put him, you kind of move him in there to protect him a little bit more. He's also got the size, right? Yeah. Where he can kind of, he can match up with those with the bigger slots that are mm-hmm. starting to enter into the league. You know, the Jackson Smith and the Jake Buzz and the. The Chase Claypools of the world, but uh, yeah. So footwork. How important is footwork in that role? It's important. Footwork is important in every position. Even if you're playing from long snapper to quarterback, footwork is the most thing you need to worry about. No matter what position. If you got bad footwork, you can't guard anybody. If you got bad footwork, you can't block nobody. So footwork. I'm working on that every day. Mm-hmm. So for you, you're playing. You're going to take over his role this year, right? Yeah. So. Talk a little bit about what you're doing right now to kind of get ready for that. Um, I'm doing the same thing. I'm working on I'm working on getting stronger, working on building my speed up more, working on my footwork too is the same. I'm working on vision and fundamentals. I'm working on just sitting back instead of like going rushing everything, staying calm and just watching. Patience. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of reacting too quick and then you react too quick, you mess up, something go wrong, then it's over with. No, that's exactly it, because that's part of the role, right? Is waiting for the play to develop and reacting to it. 
You know, especially when you're in when you're asked to play some zone, which I think you guys do that a lot. Yeah. When you're asked to play some zone, it's like you got to have that almost a natural feel for what's going on behind you, right? The guy behind you, what's he doing? You want to feel that route. You want to feel what they're trying to do, so that you just kind of shift with it and take away that lane. That's the whole idea of zone, right? Or to just come up if they're going to set up in front of you, just knock the absolute shit out of them as soon as you get there, right? But so for for you taking a year off, how did that help you? Uh, uh, it really, I mean, it really didn't help me, but it helped me at the same time. Like, I still was going to do my workouts and stuff. I still, it was just like, when I took the time off for football, I had more time to do what I wanted to do instead of, like, I was, like, now, I still got time to do what I want to do. It's just, I didn't get to do anything I wanted to do. And then when I took a year off, I had more time to go to do what I wanted to do. Like in basketball, I was just focusing on that, just locking in for the season and just focusing and grinding, staying in the gym, staying in the weight room, running, doing everything I need to do to prepare for the next season to come back. So when we talk about like your recruiting, recruiting process, it's always something. You always, you said that you focused really on your senior year on getting it done. Let's talk a little bit about your junior year. What did you start hearing that junior year that made you want to focus on your senior year? Now, I'm just saying people that I know, like kids, I see it, like, damn, getting offers from everywhere. Where are they going? So I downloaded Twitter. Brian told me to download Twitter. And I see they're just sitting, sending their stuff out. People retweeting it. Tag Coach Chris Smith from Twitter. Like, people putting up offers at that. I was like, that's pretty cool. So I was like, I'm going to start doing this. So I sent the film out, start talking to a bunch of coaches. I was talking to like 15 coaches before my senior year. Now, this is my senior year coming out. I got like maybe eight to ten offers off of it, doing the same thing. I was like, dang, I just, I like it. So I just kept on sending myself out, going back and see who was talking to me and all that. Then come with that, you get like a bunch of coaches, they're going to talk to you, but they're not always going to give you the offer. So they, if they send you a camp invite, game day invite, take it, talk to them, because you never going to know what's going to happen down the line. You might not get that offer today, you might not get it tomorrow, but you might get it down the line. So it's always good to build relationships, too. Coaches. No, that's a great point too because and you know, I tell my guys this, you know, when when they're talking with on the NFL side, like talking to scouts and this and that, it's like, man, you gotta think you gotta think beyond the field. Yeah. You gotta think beyond playing football. Right? Because one day is you're gonna wake up and your football career is gonna be over. Yeah. Like it's just gonna happen one day. You're not gonna be playing forever. So you've gotta have that sort of what am I gonna do after that? Do you wanna stay in the sport? You want to stay in the sport. These are the guys that you want to be making relationships with, right? You want to be talking to these scouts because a lot of these scouts, they were ex-coaches before they were scouts or vice versa. They'd go become coaches. That's an opportunity for you down the road, right? You, know, you can make a career for yourself as a coach, as a scout, whatever that is, because you've got a good relationship with this guy. So you never, so it's just like you said, it's a great point. You never know. But and how, how important relationships are actually with, with building that kind of stuff. Like for me, Scouting. The reason I became got into the like the scouting side that I did was because I knew this guy that's known as the face of the forty, Mark Gorsett. I built a relationship with him. Yeah. You know, he just retired from the Steelers. He's a really good guy. But that's the thing is, it's like because I knew him, I got to know all these other people yeah. because that dude knows everybody in the NFL. It's ridiculous. And so I, you know, you just go to an event, you just go hang out with him. You just walk around, you follow him everywhere, and you get to meet all these people. And that's how you build relationships, right? It's through, hey, this guy says that you're cool. This guy says that you want to, you know your shit. Then cool. You know, they're going to talk to you. But that's a great point. I'm just pointing that out. That's a great point about relationships because that is really important. And so when you pick, you pick Cumberland State. So what led you to pick Cumberland State? What, what was it about that school that just made sense? All right. So I'm going to say, well, I'm at WKU. This is in June of last year. I met the um, DB coach, T. Smith. He was cracking over me first day. I ain't never talked to this dude before to the first day. So I liked this dude. We all cool and all that. We just, we've been talking and all that. So then back in, after the senior season, let's say about, was it January, February? He didn't tell me to come visit. All right, so I come visit. We talk. We know how to visit go. Got your photo shoot, all that. He said, I want you here. It's ready to be at. We joked around, all that. I learned on that day. Or maybe the next day, he called me and gave me an offer, all right? We kept talking, but this whole time I was talking to a bunch of schools. Like I already took the official to Carson Newman. I was planning to go ahead and commit there. Then like some stuff gonna happen. But T Smith was talking to me. I told him about it. He said, 
yeah, just come here, we need you here. This is where you, this is where you really want it. And even though every coach say that, but sometimes you can actually feel it if you actually want it. So as I said, I said, soon the papers, I'll sign. So I signed like two weeks later. Then I came to school and signed in front of everybody. I was already signed two weeks mm-hmm. before I went to the school. No, so the relationship with the coach. Is yeah, with, 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 with T. Smith, you said, right? Yeah. And then he's, said, a, he's a DB coach, too? Yeah. He's a coach. So say he goes, even though maybe I want to go play D1, maybe why if he like leaves and goes to D1, I already got that relationship, so I got a higher chance of moving up with him instead of having to enter the transfer portal and go somewhere I really don't know about. Right. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too, about the transfer portal is 2,500 players from the division, from FBS alone, yeah. entered the transfer portal this year. 1,400 got, got on with another school. There's a 1,000 dudes that are sitting in the transfer portal yeah. right now. You know? They don't have a place to go, which is crazy when you think about it. Just how much that shakes up because you got the incoming class coming up and taking roster spots. And then you got all these guys from trying to move up from the FCS level in Division Two and Division Three and NAIA. And it's like, it's this beautiful chaos of just absolute <laughs> craziness. <laughs> Like, dude, I spent three weeks just doing nothing but going through the transfer portal and updating my rosters. What was it? It's insane. It's absolutely insane. So, so I'm going to pause it real quick. So, for you, because we talked about his, his mentality in the difference between his junior and senior year, what it, what it, what's that mentality right now for you? Oh, uh, so, like, uh... I play sports, it's just like, my mentality, I just want to go wherever, like, God be me. Like, God, I can't do nothing without him. Like, mm-hmm. I put him first before I do anything. It's just like, if my mind and my heart ain't where that, where that spot is at, I won't do it. Like, I always go to my parents first about everything. So, like, if I got a scholarship or anything, I would go to them and ask, like, do I think I should go? Like, what, what, what should we do? Is it, like, a debate? And then if, if, the, if I go look at the school and I like it, coaches, I'm, I'm liking them, and we got a little bind of agreement, then that's where I go. But if it's just something I don't like, I just won't do it. And I got a mind go like I just want, I want, I want my family to be good. Like I want to help my family out in times like say if I make it to the NFL, I just want to be able to send something back for my mom and grandmother. You know, that's my main goal really. You know, you, shit, shit, dude, you can be out of college now. Yeah, no, you know? <laughs> nil, man. You get you get it the right the right school, the right situation, the right place. You're gonna make something, you know. Like that's the that's the really nice thing about what's unlocked with nil, name, image, and likeness, and and just athletes being able to go out there and make money based on what they do playing football, right, yeah. or playing basketball or whatever that sport is. So yeah, you don't even have to get to the NFL anymore to do that, dude. You can get some substantial jacks. You put in the work and you get. To that point where somebody's like, Kareem Bryant needs to be a Texas Longhorn, and we're going to give him, <laughs> you know, you've, you've heard about those NIL collectives up there. They're giving like $50,000 a piece to offensive linemen just to come to Texas, you know? Getting cars and everything. Yeah, straight up. Just here, <laughs> this booster puts you in, pushes an envelope to you. Here you go. <laughs> come Texas. <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. But, uh, as you get ready for 23, right, the 23 season, what's that number one thing that you're working on with your game that you're trying to improve? What do you think that you need to improve on the most? Uh, me, I need to improve on my my feet, my footwork. Footwork is really, like my bro said, it's really important because, like, uh, if you play in safety, somebody beat you on the top, you got to turn. If they come at you and shake you, you got to be able to still get back and track. You got to be able to go everywhere. If you gotta play man, you gotta be able to follow. Mm-hmm. You gotta be able to just go. That's my. That's what I gotta work on this year. That's really what all I just been working on footwork to get better at that. So I, when the season get here, I won't have no mistakes. Well, I mean, everybody make mistakes, but I want I want to limit them to where I will make one like two or three mistakes every time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the striving for perfection, right? Like that's the goal. Is you, you're not going to ever get there, but you're always going to have that to strive for. That's, that's the beautiful thing about it, I think. With you, Trey, what's the number one thing that you're trying to fix and improve on this year? What's that? What's the focus? Really, I'm trying to fix everything. I want to be better at everything compared to last year. Like, every day, 10 hours, I would say 1% better. 
Yeah. I, I watch a bunch of Alabama football practice because I like to watch them to see how they're getting better. Even though I need help on the footwork the most, I'm working on everything together. I don't want to be good at one thing and terrible at everything. So I'm trying to transition everything good at the same time and be the best I can be. You mentioned Dallas Turner, too, who is probably going to be a first-round pick this year. <laughs> that guy can play. What was it about Dallas and his game that just drew you to him? So he's not in his game. I was on TikTok one day, and uh, Dallas Turner TikTok, he was working out, like putting in work. I was like, I like this dude. This dude's going crazy. Now. Like, he's doing all these drills. I was like, that's, that's what made me start watching Dallas Turner. So then it's, every once in a while, I'd go to the Alabama game. I'd just watch him. Him and Will Anderson. I like to see what they do. You know, I don't want to play that position. I always like to watch them. I like people who got good work mindset. That can like, like Jalen Ramsey, he got good work mindset. That's why I like him. Most people like him because he's good in trash talk. No, I like the mindset. I like to see what you do, not in the game, like before the game, to get to the game. Mm-hmm. Who's your Who's your big guy, man? Who's your inspiration? Um, who are you watching? I don't like in sports. Yeah. All right, well, basketball really is just my boy Kareem, my dude, boy. That's why I really, that's my man. Yeah. Okay. I look up to him because. He got like he, his height, and he can always score any type of way. He got the little hook shot. He can shoot. I mean, he couldn't shoot like that, but he can go in there and now. <laughs> he can. He can always find a way. He can always find a way to get to the lane and make something happen. Like every time he got the ball, if he didn't score or something, he was always making a way for somebody else on his team to get a bucket. Or he was always finding a way to help his team do something so they are winning. Or he was always finding a way to help his team improve. And then like. Watching them outside of that, I looked up some videos. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to stay in the weight room every day. He would never leave. He stayed in there from 10 a.m. all the way until the next morning, really, if you want to say. He just always had that goal, I want to do this. And he always said, I want to be better. That's his mindset. He said, I want to be better. And that's just how I look at it. I want to be better. No, that's it. That's it. That's what you kind of mentioned, too. 1% better every day, right? Because the idea is 100 days from now, you're going to be a 100% better player. Yeah. Every 100 days, you're going to be a 100% better player. Or a person. You take that You take that approach to anything in your life, really. But, no, that's exactly what it is, is you want to be better. So, in terms of replacing Trey, what are you doing? Well, who are you watching to try? Have you figured out somebody that you want to watch? Is it Trey? Are you watching him? Oh, uh, like... Well, since I didn't play last year, since I knew, like, since the uh, Tanner, our coach, he had told me, like, you come back next year, he was like, you got a spot. So, like, I already knew my role. So, watching, sitting out my sophomore year and watching him as a senior play, I was just, every time I went to a game, he was just the person I was looking up to. Like, he's just always been the guy to, like, he always pushed me forward to do my do well, I mean, he, he was one of the stars on the team anyways. You're already yeah. looking at him. So I looked, I looked at him. Like, when he was out there playing nickel, I was just like, that's why I basically want to play. Like, when he was coming down, making tackles, doing what he had to do, that's just what I looked up to in the game, really. So, for Trey, who's Trey Valentine? Man, this is Trey Valentine, the best hey, DB to come through here. But I want people, one thing I want people to know about me, that I work hard, though. Leave, like, leave the social media alone. Don't care about the stars, the offers, nothing. If you want them, they're going to come. So always work and you don't get what you want. It might not be right then, but it's going to come down the line. The harder you work, the better it's going to be. So I want, I want people to just know, like, I did everything right. I mean, everybody make mistakes, though. But if you keep everything good, you trust God, it's going to come your way. Who's Kareem Bryant? Uh, Kareem Brown is a, a hard working man. Like, if coach put him in, he's gonna do what he gotta do. Like, basketball, when coach put me in the game, I was just out there always doing what I had to do. And also, like, it's just like God, like, Philippians 413 said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, like, I can't really do nothing without, without Christ. That's what I really need. Without Him, can't do nothing. So, without God, nothing really was impossible. Really. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the time coming up here and doing this. Uh, good luck to you this year, Cumberland State. We're going to be following you for sure. And then good luck to you this year. I'll be at the games, man, so I'll be watching you. We'll be talking. Probably get some practices, too. But, again, appreciate you guys and everything that you do. Good luck. I appreciate it.